Hello my friends, this is the last video of 2022 and I am so excited. I know a lot of people have said that 2022 has passed by so quickly for them, but for me, it's felt like an eternity. I got engaged this year, I sold my house, I bought a house with my fiance, I had my first art retreat in France, so I feel very blessed. And I'm very excited for 2023. I watched my New Year's goals from the beginning of this past year, the video that I posted, and it's so interesting to see what I had planned and what I accomplished, which was not as much as I had planned. But I've already written my list of things that I want to accomplish in 2023, my personal goals, my business goals. So if you want to see another video on that, like last year, I would definitely love to share it with you. That being said, I'm here to talk to you about why I struggled with this painting. If you keep up with me here or on Instagram, you will have noticed that I haven't painted traditionally in several weeks now. I enjoy all sorts of traditional art and I still draw with pencil in my sketchbooks almost daily, I would say, but I find it very hard to switch between digital and traditional. I've been mostly painting digitally in the past couple of weeks and the reason for this is that I have a lot of imposter syndrome when it comes to my paintings and my art style. On one hand, I want my work to be more intricate, detailed, realistic. I want to prove that I'm a technically good artist, and that's because I'm mostly self-taught. I did go to college with a minor in studio arts, but if I'm gonna be honest, I learned absolutely nothing. My minor in studio arts, I did not have any kind of life drawing sessions. We did not have live models. We didn't study anatomy because naked people People are bad. <laughs> so I feel that as a self-taught artist and as a small business, I need to be constantly improving my art and my work, which I think is true. So on one hand, I want my work to be more intricate and realistic. On the other hand, I want to be able to unify all my styles across the board. So my style when I'm digitally painting is different from my sketching style, which is different from the style of my traditional paintings. And I am constantly having an internal battle about the direction of a piece, from the conception of a sketch to the finishing details, and not to mention adding any kind of deeper meaning to my work. So for me, going from digital to traditional or vice versa means that I have a steeper warm-up and practice need. When I'm only digitally painting, I'm more or less in the groove. I don't have to have crazy warm-ups before creating a painting. And in this case, I haven't picked up my acrylic gouache paints in ages. I don't remember how to best use them, and so with that warming up comes a lot of trial and error. For me, that can be an issue because I feel like I have a set amount of hours each day, each week to dedicate to painting because both my wrists and my back will hurt immensely if I spend too much time painting that week. Having too many warm-up sessions and too many mistakes is kind of aggravating. In this acrylic gouache piece that I was creating, I was very frustrated with the direction of this piece and I didn't feel that the paints were working in my advantage. So I decided to take a quick break from my work, get a snack, scroll through my phone for a bit, and take a break from my work. This leads me to the sponsor of today's video, which is Casetify. Casetify is the world's most popular tech accessory brand known for their protective phone cases and global collaboration. I have two types of cases that I want to showcase. Firstly is the bounce case, which is powered by EcoShock Impact Absorption Tech that has a 21 foot drop protection. They have thousands of designs available. I am constantly accidentally flinging my phone across the room and Casetify has protected my phone for as long as I've been using Casetify. The second type of case I want to mention is the clear case, which has a long lasting clarity with UV Defender technology. It is anti-yellowing and has a 6.6 foot drop protection. All of the cases that I have in this video have been made from recycled phone cases, and Casetify has the best artist program. You can support artist communities. An artist that I love that has Casetify cases is Felicia Chow. I love her Instagram, and her cases are also so cute. Lastly, you can customize phone cases as gifts or for yourself. These cases come in the cutest packaging, so if you're giving this as a gift, it's essentially wrapped up for you. Casetify 
Case, Bounce Cases, and Clear Cases are available at Casetify.com. Go to Casetify.com forward slash Sarah Tepes to get 15% off of your order. It's going to be linked down in the description. Thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Now that I've taken my quick break, my snack break, and my phone break, I can come back to this piece with a little less aggression. To be transparent, another reason I'm always struggling with traditional paintings is filming them. So you can see my head get in the shot multiple times, and this isn't even a comfortable closeness for me. I'm basically blind. I have astigmatism of almost negative five in both my eyes, so I'm often taking my glasses off and holding drawings and paintings up just a couple inches from my eyes, from my face. It's not cute, but it gets the job done. However, when I'm filming, I have to be very conscious of not getting in the shot, not being too close. My head isn't blocking the shot. It can definitely be upsetting if I'm already putting in the hours to paint something in an uncomfortable way for myself. And then when editing, I realize like, oh, I was still in the shot. It's okay, it's just the real talk. Because I'm breaking the fourth wall talking about the shots, do you like that this video is 4K quality? This is the first time I believe that I've filmed a video, an art video, fully in 4K because the file size is ginormous, but I thought it would be cool. It looks really nice and I feel like maybe like an ASMR 4K sketching video would be a great idea. Let me know if you'd like that. In this painting process, I decided to kind of pivot from trying to have the painting be too detailed. Realistic is not the right word, but maybe accurate to the photo that I was working off of. So I decided to step back and make it a little bit more graphic. And I think the end result of this painting is pretty nice. Do you ever feel like this? Am I the only one who struggles with unifying my work? I feel like so many artists that I admire have a cohesive style and I don't feel that mine makes any sense. Don't get me wrong, I like my work, but I want it to be better. I feel like being self-critical is always perceived as a negative thing, especially on the internet. And I don't mean it to be negative or to put myself down. And I can see how too much negativity can be exaggerated. I feel that I can grow better if I am critical of my work. I'm very proud of the improvement I made this year and I don't feel that I would have improved as much if I wasn't pushing myself, especially because of the 100 heads in 10 days challenge by Ahmed Alduri. I'm thinking that maybe in 2023 I should try another challenge, maybe hands. It sounds terrible, but I think that would be a good reason for me to have to do it, right? Let me know your thoughts. Have you used acrylic gouache? Is it difficult for you? Do you have get the hang of it? Do you also work in different types of media, like digital and traditional, and then find that the learning curve or the warm-up curve is annoying? I would love to hear your thoughts and experience. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your year and have a fun new year. Zach's birthday is new year's eve so we're gonna be celebrating his birthday and then i am so excited to come back to work after the new year with my new list of goals and things that i want to achieve in 2023 i hope you have a great rest of your day and i will talk to you guys in my next video bye